Hello and welcome to this lecture by faculty of the month of MDNAY. Today, to talk about the role of yoga in mental illness, we have with us Dr. Priyanka Rai, ma'am, who is Assistant Professor Human Consciousness in MDNAY. Aapka bohat bohat hai, madam. Namaskar, ma'am. Thank you. Namaste. I am Mamey role of yoga in mental illness ke baare mein jankari dene wali hai. और जैसा कि हमारे संस्थान की परंपरा है हम किसी भी कार्यक्रम प्रार्थना के साथ करते हैं तो आइए प्रार्थना के साथ इस कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत करते हैं तेजस्वी नवधीतमस्तु शांति 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 डॉक्टर प्रियंका राय मुरारजी देसाई राष्ट्रीय योग संस्थान में ह्यूमन कॉन्शियसनेस में सहायक आचार्य के पद पे कार्यरत हैं और अधिक विलंब न करते हुए मैं मैडम को आमंत्रित करूंगी कि रोल ऑफ योगा इन मेंटल इलनेस के बारे में हमारे दर्शकों को जानकारी दें मैडम ओवर टू यू बिल्कुल मैम थैंक यू नमस्ते मैं डॉक्टर प्रियंका राय आज हम बात करेंगे रोल ऑफ योगा इन मेंटल इलनेस पे और क्यों मैंने ये टॉपिक चूज किया है क्योंकि आप सभी को बताए कि दो टू एंड थ्री ईयर वी आर सफरिंग होम टू कोविड नाइनटीन एंड Studies have shown a lot of mental health issues has been raised during this period. So that is why I have selected this topic. And today we will learn about how the yoga is helpful in managing the mental health problems from severe to uh, mild and moderate level. So let's discuss about what is yoga. So we start our lecture with the introduction to yoga. Yoga is a derived from the Sanskrit word that is yuj. and the term yoga which stands from the union which is philosophical science what means it is a philosophical science seeking unity of individual soul with the absolute reality that is a philosophical meaning of the yoga indian philosophy yoga is one of the six darshana and the streams which codified by the sage of patanjali around 400 bc into eight divisions in his yog sutras book yoga be known as a family of the ancient spiritual practices that is originated in india and it is ancient indian way of life which includes the practices of the certain certain asanas posture regulated breathing that is called pranayama and meditations the different schools of yoga is a popular in india and abroad that is hat yoga raj yoga karma yoga gyan yoga bhakti yoga these are different schools of yoga and different practices incorporated in these schools so what is hat yoga yoga hat yoga is known for the yoga of postures yoga is ancient indian way of life which include the practices of the certain postures asanas breathing practices pranayama and meditation in same way raj yoga yoga is known raj yoga is known of the self control so there is a main objective of your raj yoga is to control the mental energies which are generally dissipated and fluctuating in nature so my, the role of raj yoga is to control the mental activities and which are disturbing in nature the mind has infinite capacity we all know so what we have to learn learn to control those activities and channelize in a constructive way karma yoga and it this is another school of yoga which is called karma yoga which focuses on people have the yoga yoga that school is for the knowledge in this stuff it is not intellectual knowledge or logical process of deduction but intuitive and the luminous knowledge we provide the wisdom which emerges from the deepest areas of the personality so it is not just only the mathematical calculation gyan yoga is something more than that it is a wisdom or the it is a knowledge which emerges from the deepest of the our personality the last which is school is most popular that is called the bhakti yoga the bhakti yoga is a pure spiritual devotion to the god and that devotion is a way of transforming your emotions from negativity to the happiness 
So we are now we have talked about the different schools of yoga. So move to the another slide, which is actually focusing on another schools and other yogic practices, which is popular in day to day world. That is Sudarshan Kriya Yoga. There is also very popular yoga practices, which focuses on the almost exclusively on the pranayama practices. Iyengar Yoga practices, which focuses on the asanas, Vinyas Yoga, which focuses on the breath linked movement. So as we can say that there are so many practices and yogi practices which are popular and gives the promising results. So now we understood the background of the yoga, what is yoga and yogic practices. So now move on the mental health because our topic is role of yoga and mental health. Before understanding the mental illness, we should know about the mental health. What is mental health? So we all know mental health is a state of well-being. So well-being in which a person understand his or own abilities, your potentialities, and can cope with the normal stress of life, can work productively, fruitfully, and able to contribute his or own community. So it is not only the absence of mere absence of illness or disease is called the health. Mental health is something when you know your capacity, when you know your strength, and you know your abilities, and that way you can cope with the day-to-day -day life stress. Because in our day to life, it's, uh, stress is very quite obvious. Even you can see now uh, work atmosphere, you can see an atmosphere, you can, uh, family atmosphere, you can see in anywhere, even you're traveling somewhere, you can see, you can find, perceive the stress. So how effectively you're coping with this day to day stress, that is your ability, unique ability. And it is different from person to person. And in that way, you can give some constructive, productive uh, uh, result in your society and workplace. So that is also called as a contribution to your community. If you are doing all this activity, then you are mentally healthy. So what if you are mentally healthy and what happens? You give your productive activities, what we have talked about. If you are mentally healthy, it means you are giving the pro uh, constructive productivity in, at work, at a school, or whatever, where you are working, even in your family, if you're a housewife, you're, if you're mentally healthy, you are, you are functioning well in the home in a very appropriate manner. Your relationship will be also very healthy in terms of your mind because suppose if you are calm composed and stress-free then you will give the quality of the time your relationship and your relationship will be very healthy in, in terms of uh, in a, uh, instead of unhealthiness and also you can adopt able to adopt to change and cope with the adversity because if suppose if you're irritated and some changes come in your life then you feel difficulty to adopt those changes and you become rigid and then it automatically it result in a in terms of stress, anxiety, and a other psychological problem. So a mentally healthy person is free to adopt the changes in a constructive and productive way. And he has the person also have a, a, a ample amount of the opportunity to change the situation in a favorable, favorable manner. So this is a basic criteria or the quality of a mentally healthy person. Is productive, he has the most healthy relationship and thought ability to adopt and cope with adversity because if something is happening according to your uh, according to your expectation, it does not mean that you have it doesn't mean you're mentally healthy. When the mental health person, person is uh, quiet, when things are adverse or unfavorable, still you stand and can cope with the situation and come up with that as a win. That is for that is the mentally healthy when We always know mental health record as that is called the cognitive behavior and emotional well-being. Right? So that is you can understand that way of how in PNA that is part of mental health. How you perceive how you thought about the and in this way you can handle your stress and situation and also you can relate to the other person you make your decision you make your choices favorable or unfavorable conditions both mentally health is important at every stage it is not required you always take care of your mental health at a certain time or the certain age or the certain gender. It requires all the time across the gender, across the age, across the religion, across the ethnicity. Because as we always take care of mental health, 
nutrition, healthy food. In the same way, you have to take care of the mental health also because it is integral part of your health. Without the mental health, you cannot be happiness. So you always need to take care of your mental health from childhood to the adolescent. So what are the factors affecting our mental health? We always wanted to know what are the factors affecting our mental health. So as we all know, physical and mental health are a result of the complex interplay between many individual and vulnerable factors. That includes family history of illness, that is called the family history of illness. And is there any history of uh, mental illness in your family, in your in either it's paternal or the maternal, that you should, you have always need to, uh, to think going forward, uh, you know, you always keep the history of this family history in your memory because it affects your mental health in a biological manner, in genetic manner. Second, lifestyle and health and behavior. So, what kind of lifestyle you follow? What kind of healthy pattern be? Do you have a healthy pattern or a healthy pattern of your behavior? And I'm talking specifically about just walking, exercise, active lifestyle, you know, sleeping time, rising time. You no, know, what kind of food you intake? So that is also affect your mental health. Level of third level of personal workplace stress. Suppose if you're continuous, if you suppose if your work is not according to your choice, or your workplace is full of your stress or the tension, then it is very difficult for you to cope up with that situation. So this situation and this factor is also very responsible for your affect mental health. Exposure to substance. What kind if you are taking intake of the alcohol and other kind of substance, this is also affect or damage your mental health. Exposure to trauma, if any. Suppose if in life if any traumatic event happens, that also depends on your mental health conditions. Personal life circumstances and history. Suppose if anything happened, bad happened in your life, that also affect your mental health. Because we know the loss of loss of someone, loved one, death of someone, it affects your mental health at a particular time. But if you're mentally healthy and strong, and if you have you realize your strength and capacity, you can overcome the situations too. Next, access to support. And what kind of support system do you have? Because every person have a should, should have a support system. I say because support system make you you feel good. It will help you to overcome the unfavorable situation at top time. So you always need to keep a good support. Mm -hmm. system. So, a skill me. What kind of the coping skill do you have? You are good in managing your emotions. You are good in managing the social relationship. You are good in managing the uh, work. So you are good in managing the problem. You have a, maybe you have a very good problem solving skill, but you are not realizing you have a good problem solving skill. So you need to brush. You need to strengthen those coping skills because it helps to reduce your stress and tension which occur in day to day life. So these factors at glance we can say affect our mental health conditions. So now we understood the mental health, but now we need to know about the what is mental illness. Mental illness reflects collectively to the significant changes in your thinking, emotions, and behavior. Please uh, focus on this point. I said the significant changes in thinking, emotion, and behavior. When you are when you are when you are suffering from kind of any psychological problems or having any kind of mental illness, you, your thought pattern, your emotions, and your behavior significantly got changed. It means maybe it turns from the positive to negative, optimistic to pessimistic. Maybe your emotions is more uh, in terms of aggressive, in terms of depressive, maybe dull, maybe sad, maybe another way. So maybe behavior is also become very you may become very introvert. You may restrict your another social activities. So you may find a significant change in thinking, emotions, and behavior. So you can identify any person whose, uh, whose behavior or emotions or thought patterns significantly change after particular events or after particular day. But another, what the way you can find out distress on the problem function, social and work and day to day life. If you are not mentally or or you having any kind of psychological problem, you find difficulty in carrying over your day-to-day -day work. 
it will like it you feel like a burden to perform any day to day activity so this kind of significant changes on or in a uh, day to day activities or the emotional thought so then that way you identify the mental illness so now we talk about the you want the statistical data because it give you more clear vision about how much mental illness is prevalent in our world even in india so there is one study uh, is conducted in the 2017 and uh, it is published in a lancet 2019 the sort of global burden of disease study it took the data from the 1990 to 2017 and what the study has found the 970 million people worldwide yes you're right 970 million people worldwide have mental health or the substance abuse disorder okay and anxiety affects 284 million people in the world in same way depression affects 264 million people in the world alcohol use disorders include any kind of alcohol use disorder affects 107 million drug use disorders affects 71 million bipolar is a kind of are the sort of mental disorders psychological disorder that is 46 million people and schizophrenia affects 20 million and eating disorder affects 60 Mm-hmm. Million people to world wide suffer from the psychological serious psychological problems. There's not only my problem, it's a serious psychological problem. In same way, see the stats of India. Also in 2017, in the same study has taken 197.3 million people had a mental disorder in India, which include 45.7 million with the depressive disorders and 44.9 million with the anxiety disorders. And you may find it's very strange even in the, the one study was conducted by the aims and it found that the gender discrepancy was also found in a mental health disorders males are more suffer from the mental health problem compared to the female so even the age also is a more vulnerable from 15 to 25 years age is more vulnerable for the mental health problem so what the statistic is data what it wants to address the problem it gives the vision about the mental health prevalence terminology and where you can alarm the situation where you can take care of yourself what the data wants to tell you so how mostly we wanted to know how we identify the mental illness problems what are the early signs of the uh, mental illness problems so it is not very much difficult to identify Mentally, just need to valid and need to observe the situation from very minute way or situation or person in a very close way manner. So, what you need to observe first, you if if any person is suffering from the mental illness, maybe your loved one or maybe is very leaving your family or the neighbor, just need to observe the pattern of the behavior. Like suppose eating and sleeping too much or too little. Pulling away from the people and the usual activities, having low or no energy. He may be feel highly energetic. Maybe he feel no energy at all. Feeling numb or like a nothing matters kind of things in your life. Having unexplained absences. Feeling helplessness, hopelessness. Smoking, drinking pattern is quite increased. Feeling unusually confused, forgetfulness. Do not confuse with the normal forgetfulness and confusion. It is obvious confusion and forgetfulness, on edge and angry, upset and worriedness, yelling or fighting with the family or the friends frequently. No, before that he was very calm and very stable with the relationship. But maybe after a certain time he become very, uh, you know, very disturbed relationship with the close one. Experiencing severe mood swings for last few days, having persistent thoughts and memories you can't get off your, uh, off your head, hearing voices, believing things that are not true. thinking of harming yourself and other inability to perform daily tasks like taking care of your kids or getting to work school yeah, it means unable to perform to day to day activity these are a cluster of symptoms if you are finding if these are called also the early warning signs of the mental illness so if you are finding someone suffering from kind of the feeling so you must need to need to take help of the mental health experts advices or the uh so solutions so that is a early warning signs you can identify and you can go and visit to the expert also so what are the most common mental illness 
because uh, these are the symptoms, but still, or just in the physical disorder, they are very common in, in physical problems like diabetes, hypertension, headache, migraine, and say, thyroid. In same way, there is a most common mental illness also too. First, anxiety, depression, substance use disorder, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, eating disorder, eating disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and so many. So I have picked only few ones. So, I, so we are now going to talk about the, what is anxiety disorder. Don't worry, fear, and stress that interferes with everyone's everyday life. Okay, so you can, uh, these are the common symptoms. Do not try to diagnose with these symptoms, okay? Depression. Depression is a persistent low mood, continuous low mood, fatigueness, profound sadness, and the prominent symptoms of the major depression. So it, it is a called a depression. Substance use disorders, frequent use of alcohol or any other substance that interferes with your personal behavior in day-to-day -day life. Bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder consists of the radical shift in a depressive or low mood and manic high moods that can last week. That is it. another serious kind of mental disorder. Another serious is schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a chronic and severe mental disorder which affects a person's thoughts, feelings, and the behavior. Eating disorders are illness that affects a person's relationship with the food and the body image. You must have heard about the anorexia nervosa. That is come under the eating disorders. Obsessive compulsive disorders, that is a chronic long-lasting anxiety disorder where the person experiences unreasonable, uncontrollable, reoccurring thoughts, which followed by the behavioral responses also. And last, PTSD, a post-traumatic stress disorder, which disorder developed in some who have experienced a shocking or a dangerous events and have a difficulty recovering from the trauma. The event has so these are common serious illness, mental illness, which we on populations. So now we talk, move on to our main topic. Now we had an introduction about the yoga, we had an introduction about the, we also had an introduction about the uh, mental illness. So this is our main concern, how yoga is helpful in our mental health uh, issues. So as we all know, yoga, which is comprises of the combination of the physical postures and breathing practices, including the meditation group. Okay, so yoga practices are relevant and effective today, not only to treat the physical and mental disorder, even in the various sort of ways, maintain and preserve and promote a healthy and happy, successful life. And there's not only uh, for talk, the many researchers have proven this fact also in the past, in the last two decades. So what is the reason for growing the interest in yoga? So besides that's all the college treatment, what is the reason for growing the interest in yoga? First reason is appealing to people concerned with the stigma associated with the con conventional mental health treatment. Means a lot of the people has a stigma. If you, if you go and visit to the mental health asylums or the hospitals, maybe a tag in our society as a mental health illness problem. So they don't want to go to conventional mental health treatments. They don't want to visit that particular place, which is assigned for the mental health problem. So first reason, they want to see um, the another treatment, which equally helpful in their problems. Second, recent uncertainty on the effectiveness and long-term benefits of the psychopharmacological treatments like antidepressant and psychostimulants. That is a very obvious reason. Obviously, the formal treatment may have some side effects or may have the, uh, if you discontinue this uh, medication, maybe the symptoms come back or the reoccurrence. So this is the obvious reason people want another treatment, equally important or equally parallel important treatment, which is equally helpful in reducing the symptoms and managing the problems. Third, the current treatment, narrow scope of diagnosis treatment. So they want to more you know, broader, active, uh, broader treatment way. Person also focuses why they choose yoga as a treatment for the mental health problems because the broader focus on the mind, body, lifestyle interventions, living a healthy and happy and flourishing life. So also working on the rehabilitation process also. That is why people choose this yoga treatment for the mental health problems. So it is not working only the diagnosed treatment approach. It also works on the rehabilitation problem so that problem will not reoccur in a future. So this is the reason why people are going to work. Uh, next reason why 
want to choose this, why people want to choose this yoga? Because it's free of side effects. Because all we know in the pharmacy you don't have a certain side effect, but this yoga does not have any side effects. So that is why it is always opted by the people. The next, assist people in treatment or recovery from the injuries and disabilities. Urgent to the current treatment it is also very useful. You can use with the pharmaceutical treatment also. It is not required you have to stop one treatment and use this yoga thing. Use treatment also, and it won't have any side effect too. So this, that is why it is very powerful, and it is very cost effective. Once you learn the protocol, which you understand, once you get the uh, training under the supervised yoga instructor or the teacher or the therapist, you can also practice at home. So that is a very cost effective uh, treatment method also. <clears throat> Now, what the yoga brings the changes on your brain. In last lecture also, I made a presentation on this yoga and brain functions, and it is related to that topic. So uh, that is why I uh, got in this. I think I already made this presentation. The neuroendocrine changes uh, due to the yoga is occurred. In practice, the yoga bring the changes on the HP axis as in the sympathetic nervous system, which both are responsible in the psychological problems or the psychological uh, illness. So what, what is the HP axis? In short, I can tell you the hypo, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which get activated in times of when any kind of stress or any kind of stress is perceived and the HP axis get activated. So that is a and various kind of, uh, you know, cortisol and adrenal glands start secretion of the cortisol, which uh, occur during the stress. What happens? Sympathetic nervous system also get activated. That is a part of the autonomous nervous system. What happens in sympathetic nervous system? Your heartbeat increase, your palpitations increase. Whenever you stress, whenever you are in stress, observe your body, feel your body. What happens? Your heartbeat increase, your palpitations increase, your dryness of the mouth. The stress response is started increasing. So when you practice yoga regularly, it brings brain level on on endocrine systems level. So hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and the sympathetic nervous system. So when these systems works properly and functionally in a regulatory way, what happens? You won't feel stress, and then you can able to manage any kind of situation in your life. It also, yoga also brings the changes on the peripheral psychological changes. That is a decrease in sympathetic nervous activity, what we have talked about, and increase the parasympathetic activities. It means what, when parasympathetic activity increases in body and mind, whatever you feel calm and stability. So yoga plays an important role in reducing stress, reducing sympathetic activity, which is not only for talk. It has been already proven by the TVD at all 2008 and empathy at all 2002. Increasing parasympathetic activity is also proven by the Zappa at all 2000. And decreased blood pressures, improving sense of well being, and decreased anxiety level. Auto study has already conducted by the Russia at all, Prashad at all, in the various subsequent years. Prevent stress related illness also. If you, as you already we are aware about it, many illness, either physical or the mental, due to our stress, the poor lifestyle. So when you practice yoga, it also helps to prevent the stress related illness. And as that was uh, found by the Khan and Pollock, 2006, Javening et al. in 1992, Rai et al. 1988, and Young and Taylor, 2000. The same findings been supported by the other researchers too. Yoga also induces the biomarker changes in people with the psychiatric disorders also. It is not only bring the biomarker changes in healthy people, it also brings the biomarker changes in unhealthy people or mentally unhealthy people also. So what this bring the change? It, it induces the changes in the blood parameters, such as brain-derived neurotropic factors, which is short, we call the weird enough to oxytocin, structural and functional changes in the brain measured by the weird enough FNRI and CMS. I can show one diagram. Sorry, this I've taken from this Varambi et al. And that study has been published by Varambi et al. in 2020. In general name is British Journal of Psychiatry. So here he did try to detect the neurobiological effects of the supposed mechanism of action of yoga. 
when you practice yoga regularly, it works on the brain in a parallel manner. So you can see it affects our neurotransmitters. It also affects our inflammation, oxidative stress, neurotrophic factors, and HPA access, what we have already discussed, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal access. So when you uh, practice asana, pranayama, any meditative postures, they bring the changes on the certain levels. Neurotransmitter is the responsible. It is a very play pivotal role in a psychopathology. I, I, here I want to mention a few of the neurotransmitters that is dopamine, serotonin, GABA, acetylcholine. So they play very pivotal roles in a in a, any kind of like schizophrenia, depression, OCD. So when the uh, people suffer from the depression or the either from the depression or schizophrenia or OCD, these kind of the neurotransmitters get disbalanced. So yoga also helps to bring the, uh, not only bring the regulation, also helps to maintain the homeostasis of the dopamine and certain kind of neurotransmitters. But even it also helps to regulate the inflammation of oxidative stress. Maybe it is a gamma amino acid, maybe is a nucleus, the K-beta uh, oxidative stress. So you have also with the neurotropic factors, weird enough, telomere lengthy, telomere increase, the HP axis, which also helps to reduce the cortisol. So as you can see on the diagram also, it brings the change and now it becomes a change on your modulation of your psychopathology. So what happens when you practice the yoga regularly, it brings the changes on the certain level of neurotransmitter inflammation, neurotropic factor, HP axis, and then it will bring the change on your psychopathology. It also helps to bring the changes in you know, structural changes also, cortical thickness, hippocampal volume, neuroplasticity, and then your modulation of ANS also, what she is. Autonomic nervous system, which helps to increase the parasympathetic nervous system and decrease the sympathetic nervous system. So, in this way, the whole mechanism of yoga, which create the change, will bring the balances on your mind body level. So, now we will look at a few research findings and studies which have supported this. Uh, theory and which is supported this phenomena. So they now we start with the schizophrenia on psychotic spectrum disorders. Is yoga is effective in a severe mental illness? Yes, we already knew that yoga is very quite effective in anxiety and depression. Is it really affecting psychotic spectrum disorder, which is the most serious and the severe illness of the mental health? So definitely it has uh, proven yes. It has uh, shown the positive effects on the on the schizophrenia and psychotic disorder, and it is measured by the PANAS is one of the scale, the positive and negative syndrome scale of the schizophrenia, which you measure the positive and negative symptoms of the schizophrenia. So, uh, one study was done by the Dure et al. in 2007, Nikai et al. in 2014, and Bhatia, it's in Bhatia et al. 2017, all have reached to the same conclusion. That yoga therapy have shown the positive effect on the panacea's total score started decreasing, positive subscale started decreasing, scores of the positive scale decreasing, scores of the negative subscale started decreasing, even in the general psychopathology of the schizophrenia or the psychotic disorder patient has been they decreased. They found the improvement in a psychosis. So Another one study was due to me at all 2007. He also found that the, not only the psychopathology has been started in uh, decreasing, but also the functioning means uh, uh, you have to understand what is schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a positive or negative symptom of the psychosis. So when the person suffers from the schizophrenia, it is not only active psychopathology, also the person starts withdrawing from the society and he doesn't want to interact with the society, want to live in their own world. So it is also found that those practices yoga therapy regularly, we are seeing the improvement of function outcome of the schizophrenia also. They start socializing with the people, they get the better social and occupation, they start working, they start performing their day-to-day -day activity. So yoga therapy is not only helps reduce the psychopathology, it also helps to improve the social and occupational functioning. So it has been proven already by the Dura Swami at all, 2007, JRM at all, 2013, Costa at all, 2017. And in this way, the quality of life of that patient is also has been improved. Subjective feeling of the well-being is also helpful in improving the well-being feeling. So we all know what is well-being, the status of well-being is emotional, cognitive. Personal hygiene also improved, life is still improved, interpersonal activities and communication which got poor in, a, in this disorder, it also improved with the health, continuous practices of the 
Yes. Another study in 2011, he uh, conducted a randomized control study in patients with schizophrenia and they, they provided with the eight week of the therapeutic yoga programs and they showed the significant improvement in a psychopathology and quality of life which compared with the control. In the same way, Bayer at all in 2011 conducted a study and they found uh, improvement in the not improvement in the psychopathology, also the facial emotional expression of the schizophrenic patient also improved. Means they able to um, comprehend their emotion in a positive way, positive manner. Social occupational functioning improved in an antipsychotic stabilized outpatient with the schizophrenia. So all in the gist, we can say the various study has supported this fact. The yoga therapy is helpful in a, even in a serious mental illness. Another disorders which we have talked earlier also, see how the, it is effective on depressive disorder, how the yoga is effective on the major depressive disorders. I'm not talking about the mild or moderate, I'm talking about the major depressive disorders here. So advantage of yoga demonstrated the changes in a depression are improvement in anxiety, behavioral activation, non-judging facets of the mindfulness. So Sama et al. has 2017 has conducted study and found such kind of uh, findings in their study. Study at all have established a significant improvement in depression and life satisfaction in elderly depressed women as compared to, to the control group who is uh, receiving the treatment as usual protocol for hospital. A study by the Desico et al. 2004 and he also supported the other findings and what they found he demonstrated a significant improvement in depression among the patient with the post-traumatic stress disorder. If you remember, I have uh, this, uh, I have mentioned this disorder in uh, my previous slide. So, what they have in the, those PTSD students, those practice yoga therapy along with the TAU, they also shown the improvement in the depressive symptoms. Posta when or 2017, they also found the depression improved significantly both mindfulness guided imagery and groups or where the maintenance of this effects require the continuous practice of the mindfulness. What they want to say, it doesn't mean you will only uh, practice the yoga therapy for a certain period of time and your depressive symptoms will be improved. No, you need to practice in a continuous manner and regular uh, manner. Otherwise, it may get, uh, maybe it get disturbed. Another study has established the improvement in depressive symptoms appear to directly related to the baseline manually of depression. What I, what this slide want to convey, this convey, the, the researchers and studies have been proven that the yoga therapy has also shown the positive fraternal uh, improvement of the depressive symptoms. In the same way, there are two more studies. Here, 2013, Iguana, Hagen, and Usha, and year 2014. Here, that children and young people cope with the stress and contribute positively to balance and well-being and the mental health. In the same way, this our finding also supported the our facts. Next slide. Yoga and mindfulness, how affecting a bipolar? It is definitely bipolar is a disorder. Uh, so, Louis Blackler et al. conducted a qualitative study on yoga practices and the impact of yoga among the 70 self identified yoga practitioners with bipolar disorder. And they found the positive effects of yoga have been described under the cognitive, emotional, physical domain. Means yoga therapy not only bringing the emotional regulation, also they, their thought pattern also has been some changed. And the physical domain, they start controlling their activities. That means their activity in bipolar disorder activities either are quite increase or decrease. So when they start practicing the yoga therapy, the physical areas also has been got improved. Chadwick et al. studied 12 individuals with the bipolar disorder stable means and this active psychopathology has been subsided. So they studied the 12 stable individuals with the bipolar disorders and what they found six after the six weeks of the, the mindful sessions, what they found, the participant reported enables them to integrate into all the aspects of life and the respond highly. It means they have shown definitely a positive effects on the on our symptoms. Another finding was financial suggested yoga exercise has a positive benefits for both physical and the mental health of the elders with dementia long-term care facilities. It also has helped you know, dementia patients also as well in a yoga therapy. In the same way, effect of yoga on post-traumatic stress disorder is also seen that few studies I, I don't want to read. I just stating this fact because I just want to highlight one more study by at all 2016. 
and he conducted 102 compact battalions, that is the post-war uh, soldiers, to, which suffered, who they are suffered from the post-traumatic stress disorder. We know all the war, in war, lot of casualties, lot of natural uh, events happen. So these soldiers were suffer from the post-traumatic stress disorder, or they they they. They implemented the yoga therapy, and what they found in this study, they found the symptoms. Not only the symptoms of the post-traumatic stress disorder have been improved, but also their emotional and cognitive functions also improved after the yoga therapy in comparison to the cold control group. So, as you can see, the ADSD also ADSD is a disorder. It is it is full name is attention deficit hyperactive disorders. Usually, the children has suffered from this disorder, and yoga therapy also have shown the promising result on this group. Yoga also have not touched the autistic spectrum disorders. It, it also it, it delivered the most significant findings. Call in about 2019, what they found the yoga as a promising tools for enhancing the motor and imitation skill of the children with autistic spectrum disorders. Because as we all know, autistic, autism or, uh, is, has a main core symptoms of the motor imitation skill of the children. They, they have very difficult to intimate and imitate the fine motor movements. So what happened this year when the children with this disorder practice yoga regularly, they not they are not only soil the enhancing motor activity is not improved, but also the imitation skills also get improved daily. So children in yoga group improved gross motor performance and displayed fewer imitations and parasites errors, which copying train the specific yoga poses. And yoga is also very helpful in improving the sleep, uh, sleep quality. I mean, they also show the effect on the sleep disorder also. A lot of yogic practices, even yoga nidha, a lot of yoga asanas, pranayama, it has a positive effect on not only improve the sleep quality, it improves the depression, sleep disturbance, the quality of sleep, and also a daytime dysfunctions is improved with the regular practices of the yoga. Why I'm mentioning regular, regular? Because I, I, you need to practice this yoga you know, on only on the regular basis. Otherwise, it won't give any positive effects on your mental health life. Compliance is very important in this therapy also because as we already know the formula always focuses on the compliance, correct? So if you are not um, follow regularly, if your compliance is not very good, this therapy also it also not going to give you a promising result. So really, if you want to uh, want to receive a positive treat, uh, positive outcome, or the if you want to improvement, so you need to practice this any kind of whatever the yoga that is provided by the yoga. Teachers, you need to practice regular basis, the prescribed manner. So that way, you can then you can receive a promising result or the positive results. So thank you, uh, thank you so much. With this, I would like to conclude my lecture. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for such an insightful lecture. Uh, in our comment section, there are many questions. I would like to ask one question. Ye hu, ki... Ma, the voice is not coming. Uh, are you coming? Are you coming? Okay. मैम एक क्वेश्चन मेरा ये है कि क्या स्टडीज के आधार पर हम ये कह सकते हैं कि सिजोफ्रेनिया का पेशेंट उसकी कंडीशन एज इट इज वहीं पे स्टेबल हो जाएगी या उस उसको बेहतर भी किया जा सकता है योगा के प्रयोग के माध्यम से योगा करने से वो बेहतर हो जाएगा या उसकी जो कंडीशन है वो वहीं स्टेबल हो जाएगी आगे और स्थिति खराब नहीं होगी ये किसी ने प्रश्न पूछा आपकी वॉइस मुझे बहुत कम हो रही है आपको आवाज आ रही है मैडम 
किसी ने एक ये प्रश्न पूछा है कि इन स्टडीज के आधार पर क्या बता सकते हैं कि योगा करने से एक सिजोफ्रेनिया के एक पेशेंट की स्थिति में मेरी आ सकती है या वो वहीं पे ही स्टेबल हो जाएगी उसकी कंडीशन एज इट इज वहीं पे स्टेबल हो जाएगी और खराब नहीं होगी जी आंसर करें जैसे स्किल्स ऑफ पेडिया मैंने पहले बताया इट्स वेरी सीरियस इलनेस मेंटल इलनेस एंड डेफिनेटली इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू स्टेबलाइज द सिम्टम्स बट आल्सो शोइंग द इंप्रूवमेंट इन इन पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव सिम्टम्स सो डेफिनेटली इट विल शो इंप्रूवमेंट नॉट स्टेबलाइज द कंडीशन ओके मैम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सच एन इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इनसाइटफुल लेक्चर टुडे आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हमारे दर्शकों को हमारे सभी श्रोताओं को इतना अब कार्यक्रम का समापन शांति पाठ के साथ करेंगे सर्वे सन्तो निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित दुख भाग भवे मा कश्चित दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मैम और हमारे साथ जुड़ने वाले सभी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद